I'm Jeannie Caldwell, and welcome to In His Presence. I'm glad you joined me today. I'm teaching on knowing your enemy, and I'm telling you what, last week we got into it, and we're going to get into it even more today, because you need to know who your enemy is and how he comes against you, so you can defeat him, because as long as you're living on this earth, he is the God of this world, and he's going to come after you, so you you need to know you have authority over him and how you can fight the good fight of faith. There's a song I want to start off singing that my son wrote, taken right out of the book of Revelation, uh, chapter 21, and it talks about the peaceable kingdom. And that is one time that Satan is not going to be around. This is after he's been done away with and put in the sea of forgetfulness. And it's some some place that we're all looking forward to being. Peaceable kingdom. <laughs> A new heaven and a brand new earth coming down from God above. It's the holy city, New Jerusalem, and its presence is filled with love.
forever. And forever is a long, long time. I'm looking forward to it. And I'll be right back after this short break. With a simple prayer, fill my cup, Lord. Jeannie Caldwell opened the door to the love of God to overflow in her life and experience God's supernatural ability. She shares intimate details from her walk with God in this delightful read, My Supernatural Encounters with God. With practical illustrations, Jeannie explains how she has come to know the love of God in a more personal way, revealing the love that God has for all of us through her story. This book, my Supernatural Encounters with God has been made available to you for $5.99 plus shipping and handling. To order your copy, call us at 1-888-641-3375 or log on to our website, www.vtntv.com. Learn how you can experience supernatural encounters with God and have your cup overflowing with the love of God in your life today. Now, we want to pick up where we left off uh, last week. And uh, so the second part I'd like to start with today uh, of this first part, the second part of the first part is who is the devil and what are demons? Well, there is only one devil, but many demons. And there is many demons or spirit beings, whatever beings, whatever you want to call them. They never die. So there is many now on this earth as there was at the time that uh, Satan was dethroned and cast onto the, from out of heaven onto this earth. There's just as many demon spirits on this earth today as there was then, is what I'm trying to say, because they never die. Spirits are eternal. They never die, never. Now, Jesus is the Word and became flesh, so we know that he created Lucifer. There was God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, and all three worked and operated as one. Now go to Colossians uh, 1, 6 real quickly, and we'll find out that Jesus, in fact, did create all things, and He is the Word. Colossians 1, 16, For by Him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether there be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by Him and for Him. And He is before all things, and by Him all things uh, consist. So, and there are other scriptures. Hebrews 1, 2 tells us that He made the worlds. And we read in John 1, 1 through 3, that all things were created by Him. In fact, let's turn there. I, I really like this scripture. I quote it quite often. I remember when it was a revelation to me that Jesus was, in fact, the Word. <laughs> I didn't even know that. When I first, the Word was first, you know, revealed to me. I'd been a Christian for many years. But I didn't know that Jesus was the Word. And you know, you that have been in this teaching uh, era for the last 20, 25, 30 years at least, you know that. But up until I started hearing the teaching and being taught myself, I didn't know that Jesus was the, really the Word, even though it says in the beginning was the Word. And that's what it says in 1 John 1. Uh, it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Verse 3, all things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of men. You go on down to verse 14, and it says very plainly and clearly, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. I saw that and I thought, well, isn't that something? The Bible tells us that Jesus was the Word and He came, became flesh. When you look in Genesis 1, 
Uh, it tells us that uh, that God is the commander in chief, so to speak. In the beginning, you know, there was God. And then he spoke the commandment, you know, let there be light. And then the word of God that went forth out of his mouth, which was Jesus, he performed the word, but the spirit of God was there to bring forth the light. They all three worked together as one because they were all three there in the beginning. Well, I don't want to get up on that teaching, but anyway, um, I just want you to know that Jesus is the Word, and He became flesh. So He created Lucifer. In the beginning, Lucifer was actually an archangel. There was Gabriel, and then there was Michael. Michael is the warring uh, angel of God. He's the one that uh, fought that, uh, that other powerful demon spirit that was uh, trying to keep that angel Actually, there was an angel bringing Daniel waited 21 days for an answer, and in and, and the spirit realm, uh, Michael was sent forth to, to help bring that message down to him because there was warring spirits there trying to keep him from getting uh, the message. But Michael is a warring angel, and Gabriel is a messenger of God. He's the one that went to all the people, you know, Mary and Elizabeth, and let them know that they were going to have a child. and. And uh, he was a messenger sit straight from the throne of God. So they were called archangels. Well, Lucifer in the beginning was an angel. He was an archangel. And uh, let's, let's, let's look at this just a minute. Let's go over to Ezekiel 28. Um, there's a lot of scriptures that, that actually Ezekiel 28, 11 through 17, Isaiah 14, 12 through 14, and Revelations 12 seven through nine. And, uh, but I want to, uh, I want to read some of these for you, for you to, and I won't read all of it because it's just too much to read, but starting with verse 13, Ezekiel 28, verse 13, it says, Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God, every precious stone was thy covering, the sardis, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, uh, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle, and gold. And it says, The workmanship of thy tabrets, tambourines, music, rhythm, and sound, and of thy pipes, any wind instrument, was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou was upon the holy mountain of God, Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire." Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings, and they may behold thee. And it goes on to talk a little bit about that. Now, in Isaiah, let's go back to Isaiah, right before Jeremiah, Isaiah uh, 14 tells us a little bit more about Satan. This is when he was um, all caught up in himself. Uh, 12 through 14. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend unto heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend upon the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. And they that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms? He was cast out of heaven because he was lifted up in pride. And I tell you what, so many people have to deal with pride. 
And pride is so many more things than you think it is. Uh, I heard a teaching recently on pride, and I think I'm going to pull pull it together and, and get my own notes and teach it sometime because it's a shock of how many things are pride that we don't think are pride. But at any rate, he was lifted up because of his beauty, and he wanted to exalt his throne above the Most High God. And you know, I was saying last week, he wants to sit on the throne in our own minds. He may not be on the throne in heaven, but if he can just cast God out of our minds and put himself up there on that throne, then he succeeded. He succeeded in his plan. And then we read in John 1, 1 through 3, that all things were made by him. Now, uh, and then Revelations 12, 7 through 9, it says, There was war in heaven, and Satan was cast to the earth. So that's where he is now. It actually tells us that he is the God of this world. Now, if you're born again, he's not the God of your world. But if you're not born again, he is your God. And you may not like to hear that, but you're either one or the other. He's either your father, God, or he's not. Satan is your God because he's the God of this world. Luke 10, 18 said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. So he fell from heaven. Now Satan regained his dominion over the earth through Adam's fall. He is the God of this world, as I was saying. He's the God of the unsaved. Jesus stripped his authority. We know that. And now we, when we accept Jesus, are under grace. The church is in the grace, uh, under grace right now. And we will be under this grace period until Jesus comes back, takes us away to be forever with him. First, there's the, the rapture of the church, and then we'll come back to this earth and we'll reign for a thousand years, the millennial reign. But through Jesus, we can defeat Satan because Jesus defeated him 2,000 years ago. Colossians 2.15 says, And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. He triumphed, Jesus triumphed over all the powers and principalities of evil, and he made a show of them openly, triumphing over him in it. I guess that was very shameful for Satan, who is the big bad god of the underground and of this earth in a lot of ways. He's, but he's not my god, and I want no part of him. Now, demons are disembodied spirits and can only operate fully through the bodies of men and beasts. Beasts, B-E-A-S-T-S, -E beast, you know, like cows and dogs and pigs. Demons, uh, they can, however, live in trees. They can live in houses, but they can only operate fully through men and beasts. You know, you've heard of people talk about haunted houses. Sometimes there are. Uh, sometimes it's people just playing, you know, silly games on somebody else. But I know of a house when I was a child that literally you find out, we found out later that someone had been killed in that house, and that's where you really have to be, you have to cleanse a house where a murder has been committed or anything of that nature because there are evil spirits connected, and sometimes they stay there. So what you have to do, I know this one particular house, so you would all of a sudden hear a door open and nobody walk in, you look, and then the door shut, and you don't see anybody. And you may hear something kind of tinking around or, you know, clinking of glass or something like that, and you look, and you don't see anybody. And then you'll hear a door open and someone go out, but you don't see them, and then it shuts. I mean, those sort of things happen. And you just have to know that you don't have to be afraid of it because if you have authority over it, you can take authority over it and resist them and anoint your house with oil and cast them out and bind them and say, don't you come back into this house anymore. I won't have you. You either need, you either need to do that or move because I've heard many drastic, horrible things that have happened from people that have lived in houses that have had demons that live in there, evil spirits. 
a lot of stories uh, that I have heard from the late Dr. Sumrall where I got most of the things that I'm teaching right now, he taught me in person and shared with me and I read his books. And it was through Dr. Sumrall and Dr. Kenneth E. Hagen Sr., these men of God that were, have been around for years and years. Brother Sumrall, like I say, has already gone on to be with the Lord and, and uh, Brother Hagen's in his late 80s. I think he's about 84. They're men of wisdom and uh, they've shared some of these things and I'm telling you, it's real. It's not just, quote, stories. It's truth and you need, you'd be wise if you would, if you would take heed. Like I said before, there are no good demons. They hate God and they hate us because we're made in His image. His objective is to, to prevent the Holy Spirit from having complete control over our lives. He doesn't want Him to have His way in our lives. He does not want God to use you for His glory. So He'll do everything in His power to keep you from being what God wants you to be. Demons can work through, uh, through us by holding on to our flesh. He gets into the mind realm and into the flesh. He cannot get into your spirit if you've been born again. Demons, however, know their fate and recognize those who have power over them. In Matthew 8, 29 through 32, we won't go and read the story, but I would ask you to go and read it. It's about when uh, the demoniac was filled with all those demon spirits and um, he was in the, well, let's read it real quick because, well, not all of it, but I, wanna, I don't want to get it wrong here because I've got quite a few different references, but this is, this is really good. As I was studying on this a couple of days ago, I thought, man, that is, that's interesting. Uh, but Matthew 8, starting with the 29th verse, uh, it talks about um, uh, the, the um, let me get to where it starts, over here. And when he came to the country of the Gadzarenes, there met him two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs, exceeding fear, so that no man might pass that way. And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? They know that there is a time that their torment is coming. So and until that time, they're trying to do everything that they can to manifest their evil powers through people. And they were living in these poor men that were in the tombs, and it says they would cut themselves and everything. And so um, they asked if they could be, uh, they besought Jesus if they could go um, into the herd of swine that was feeding. And they, um, so cast, he cast them into the swine. That's pigs now. So they went into the pigs, but the pigs, it said, and when they were come out, they went into the herd of swine, and behold, the whole herd of swine ran violently down a steep place into the sea and perished in the waters. And um, I thought to myself, there were about 2,000, I think, pigs, swine, that these demons went into, and they ran violently into the sea. So that goes to show you how many demons were in those men. They were possessed, not oppressed, possessed with the devil. But you know what? They, they, uh, they were absolutely set free when he cast them out. Now the Lord told me to cast out demons. Now go to Mark 16, 17. And it said, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, and they shall speak with new tongues. Now, the Lord told me early in our ministry, mine and Happy's ministry, and our son at that time, he was a little boy, and he traveled with us, that I was going to operate in that capacity. I was going to believe in God enough in His Word, have the gift of faith, Brother Hagin says you have to have the gift of faith to cast out demons. Anybody can cast out a demon, but there's a certain ministry for that, and, and you have to know that you know that you know you have authority over them to cast them out. And uh, so I began to study on it. At first, it scared me. I wanted no part of it whatsoever. I didn't want anybody to know because I didn't want to cloak out there saying, you know, I cast out devils, you know, and because there was a lot of that going on at that time. 
but I knew and by studying when I found out that I had authority over them in the name of Jesus, not in my name and not in my authority, then I took that mantle and I, I began to cast out demons and people would come to me for deliverance and they were changed. They were delivered. They were set free. And uh, we know though from we've established today that demons are real, the devil is real, and we have authority over them. Well, please join me next week for In His Presence and we'll find out more about the enemy. God bless you. I love you. Thank you for joining us today for In His Presence. You can write Jeannie Caldwell at Post Office Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas 72221, or email her at Jeannie Caldwell at VTNTV.com. Join us next time as we meet In His Presence.